Africa has over the last three decades witnessed a significant momentum and global movement towards a more equitable world that questions the logic of gender inequality in the international quest for sustainable development. In the Gambia, the government recognizes the importance of gender equality and women empowerment in the drive to attain sustainable national development. I'm going back to the roots of our culture, which says nothing happens without the participation of the women. They are the, the better half of humanity. The first school, I am alive today thanks to one God, secondly thanks to my mother. It means the participation of Gambian women and Gambian men in ensuring the development of the Gambia, because after all, development is about people, from the beginning, from the middle, at the end, it's all about human beings. And in the world, we have male and female species. And therefore, in the Gambia, men and women are the people who would ensure that development takes place. Significant strides have been made over the years to promote and advance the status of women. And this includes the establishment of the National Women's Council and Bureau in 1980 by an Act of Parliament and the transfer of the Women's Affairs portfolio to the office of the Vice President in 1996. And the Council being the advisory body mm -hmm. to government. Mm -hmm. um, that's their role. Yeah, that's their role. The main role. Right? Main role. Therefore, needs an office that will admi administer mm -hmm. their work. Mm -hmm. So that's, as you said earlier, that's what the Bureau is. Mm -hmm. Now, this Council, what it does is, it, it represents every Gambian woman. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you see women come to the Women's Bureau and say, I want to be a member of the Women's Bureau. I say, you're already a oh, member. Oh, okay. This office is your office. All right. So you don't need <laughs> to. They don't know. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. They just think it's one organization. But mm -hmm. no, it's the office of all Gambian women. Mm -hmm. It's their house. Mm -hmm. So um, that council advises government mm -hmm. in terms of what policies to put in place, mm -hmm. what programs to put in place, what projects to put in place mm -hmm. that will actually address the problems of women. Mm -hmm. And those that have been put in place, mm -hmm. they analyze them, review them mm -hmm. to see whether really they are the right policies, mm -hmm. programs, and projects. Mm -hmm. And if not, they come up with recommendations. The 1997 Constitution of the Gambia provides for the promotion of equality between men and women in the political, economic, and social spheres. Lessons learned during the implementation of the 1999-2009 National Policy for the Advancement of Gambian Women, which sought to advance the welfare of Gambian women, has been incorporated into a new gender policy document making it more broad-based and all-compassing. The new gender policy provides, among others, the legal framework for the institutionalization of gender mainstreaming and a right-based approach at all levels in all sectors. We are being represented. For example, when you look at the executive, four of us, I think, are, are members of cabinet. Out of a cabinet of, would we say now, 16? That's not a bad figure. In fact, we were 33 percent at one time when we evaluated the Gambia. Okay, we haven't made made much of an inroad at the national assembly level, but we have made progress when you compare it with the fir first republic, where we had only one elected female representative, Nima Setasani Boga. But today, we are proud to say that at one time we had three. Today we have two. It's not a bad figure either. Because put, living, having confidence in women and electing them in the positions was a problem in Africa, as you know, in the past. But the president, how does he make up for it? He nominates most of the, most of the nominations that are done at the level of the National Assembly are female, which shows that the president also makes up for it. You come to the private sector, you see that women are also uh, managers. Mm -hmm. They are managing directors. Mm -hmm. They are members of boards. Mm -hmm. And you go to the regional level, Again, some of them are even here talking about board yeah, of directors. Board of directors. Mm -hmm. You go to the um, regional level, you see women are also there. 
um, you go to the local level. Women are a member of village development committees, ward development committees. In as much as you think those positions are low, mm -hmm. but these days that's where actual development decisions are taking place. The policy takes into account the concerns and aspirations of women and men, boys and girls, and ensures that resources are adequately allocated to ensure equal opportunities and the participation of both sexes in all aspects of development. With a very small formal sector in the country, women constitute 21% of the civil service labor force. However, the majority provide support services, notwithstanding many Gambian women are making their mark alongside the men folk, despite the relatively low level of education among women due to our traditional gender roles and cultural norms. When you look at even the public service, again the executive, you'll find that women are at varying levels from managing directors over the years you've seen. Uh, various women be director general, you know, like the MDI, for example. We've had two in a row, Jukajama, if you remember, mm -hmm. and now Mrs. Ka. Mm -hmm. And these are very important institutions, mm -hmm. which put together are part of the University of the Gambia. Mm -hmm. You know, these are tertiary institutions that are part of the University of the Gambia. Mm -hmm. At varying times, we had, uh, for example, attorney generals who are female, mm -hmm. and you know that mm -hmm. over the years. Mm -hmm. And of course, when you look at even auditor general that was female at one time, and accountant general, even minister of finance that was female was there at one time. I mean, just to give you an example, today of course in cabinet we have a woman who is the minister for energy, a woman who is the minister for basic and secondary education, a woman who is of course minister of women's affairs and tourism and culture. More and more women are now joining the formal sector of the economy breaking the barriers and moving into areas that were dominated by men. In a place setter is quite challenging because there are so many young people out there that we would like to encourage to get into this field. It's not as scary as people think it is and everything is set right now as in the environment and everything. It's the interest that's left. Right now, all over the world for that matter, I find that it has been realized that development um, has a lot of obstacles, national development, because of the fact that one aspect of society does not have the capacity to um, give as much as they should in national development. And um, that um, section is um, the women's section. Patricia Bergen is one of the new breed of Gambian women. I'm the financial controller and the administrator of Banjo Boris Limited. I'm also the chairperson, board of directors of the Gambia Investment Promotion and Free Zones Agency. It doesn't take much, really. I think you have to have uh, confidence in yourself. That is one. Whether you are educated or not, well, whether you have formal education or informal education, you have to have determination and the will and then as I said you have to have confidence in yourself and uh, also you have to be a very hard-working person very determined mm -hmm. you know because as I said uh, earlier on it's not easy to be a leader mm -hmm. es especially a woman leader mm -hmm. 